Hi everyone, this is Shelley Taylor-Smith and today we've got a special video with the Chief Editor of Daily News OpenWaterSwimming.com, Mr. Steve Munatonis, who you're looking at right now. Hi Steve, good Hello, morning. how are you? Good. Um, give, us some, uh, give us a bit of feedback from yesterday's race because everybody's been following your blog posts and we've been getting some interesting feedback. Um, interesting racing. Uh, it was absolutely fascinating. You had uh, what I would I would judge it as a changing of the guard. You had uh, a group of Italians who obviously went 1-2. Uh, you had a group of Americans, one of which was disqualified, but who was leading the race. Um, you had two Americans, potentially in the top 10. You had Russians, who one dropped out and one finished 15th. Very you interesting. You had, uh, frankly, um, a surprise in the uh, British, who did not place well. So the uh, reigning world world champion. Correct. Women's um, champion. You, so you had the Olympic gold medalist, the reigning world champion, the uh, bronze medalist from Beijing, all finishing out of the money. Um, you had two Italians, uh, none of whom have won a previous world championship or an uh, Olympic medal, coming one two. So that uh, for 2011, that looks to be a very exciting race. And as we know in open water have to expect the unexpected. Now you were there right at the finish side by side with me and oh actually you were at, you were at Timekeeper yesterday weren't you? I was the chief judge. Chief judge, oh chief judge, chief editor, chief judge uh, for FINA Technical Open Water Swimming Committee and you know like myself those girls yesterday we both witnessed those girls were they had put everything on the line they were absolutely tank was empty wouldn't you say? Absolutely, they, you, coaches always ask athletes to give a hundred percent uh, some athletes say they give 110%. These athletes truly gave it all they, they had. It was unfortunate at the end when we did see um, two athletes get disqualified. Um, it, nobody likes to see those at the end. There was nothing um, intentional about it. It was, it was just a bunch of athletes giving it all they can. Uh, their minds were probably clouded with uh, uncertainty. Their body was probably racked with lactic acid and they just went for it and it just so happened in a small area you have lots of people now it's interesting because we talk about you know we talk about the mindset and um we talk about this lake you know you swam the traversay like myself and many other legends like paul asmuth claudio plitt philip rush who are here in um in uh, in Robbervale witnessing these world championships do you think the lake, the conditions yesterday, you know, the, the, the weather has changed, it has turned. As you can see right now, it's, uh, it's, we've both got our jackets on, it's a bit nippy. Not, it's just fresh for now, world, because we're tough. <laughs> but do you think that the conditions here is going to change um, the race conditions or the strategies today for the men? Absolutely. Um, we know yesterday, uh, two days ago, the water was 74 uh, degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yesterday, it started out at 20 degrees Celsius, approximately 68 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit. During the race, it dropped 2 degrees Celsius, so it went from 68 to approximately uh, high 64, 65 Fahrenheit. And we saw uh, athletes come out, they were cold, they were wrapped in blankets. Today, uh, we got an unofficial reading from one of the athletes uh, who's done a 5K warm-up swim. Uh, that the water was 17 degrees, 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you have cloudy skies. Um, so the athletes came in here two days ago. It's bright, sunny skies. It's 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 24 degrees Celsius. Now it's overclassed. <laughs> um, colder water. The men who are be coming today have just seen a tremendous race with the women. Uh, women coming out with fat lips. Oh yes. Uh, women who are complaining about getting dunked, uh, including Natalie Detoy, um, our you know our famous amputee swimmer, uh, truly courageous woman who, when people knock her down, literally push her down, she turns over. She can't keep her balance. You know, it's a ruthless sport out here. It's interesting that um, you know you think, you know you think the human spirit, when you've got someone that's a Paralympian who is has a handicap that you would hate to think that someone would use that to their advantage you know a, another competitor but it is it is dog eat dog out there yeah um, it's a doc, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde people are out here athletes respect each other on land and they get in the water and they have put 
put in thousands of hours of training. Uh, they all want to win. There's only going to be one winner. Uh, they're in a small area. Uh, there's only one perfect line and they all want to take it. And there's a huge crowd and this is what happens. I've got two questions for you. This course is um, a bit different to most world championships. Do you think the course, the you know, they've got uh, they've got most of the buoys on their left and there's one where they have to go to the, on their left shoulder and one's on their right shoulder. Do you think that confused some of the girls? Do you think that confused them in the heat of the battle? Absolutely. Um, with me, So there are nine different tangents that an athlete has to go around in this course. So that means there are 36 changes of directions during the course. 36 changes of direction truly taxes their navigational IQ. And you're talking about, you know, elite athletes, you know, giving it their all. And in that pack, that, that like a peloton in cycling, it's, it's, it's a pressure cooker. Absolutely. And I think what we'll see with the men traditionally has been different from the women. Uh, the women yesterday went, I mean, led by Eva Fabian and uh, Carrie Ann Payne, they went for it. The women mm. just can accept the pain from the very beginning. Uh, they just go 10K all out. The men, on the other hand, I think you will see, they'll go out fairly hard for about 400 meters and then downshift. They will start to cruise, they will start to get in position, uh, the women traditionally go in one large pack and the men will go in a large pack, they'll split up, they'll come together, they'll split up, they'll come to back together. Um, in some ways the women um, are more gutsy in my opinion, in some ways the men are more strategic and tactical. Uh, but it is true, just like the women yesterday, that it is going to be a dogfight, the last loop. That is that last 200 meters to the finish when you come around that final turn and you know, when you've got a pack, it, it, it's very difficult if you are on the inside to miss that turn because there's a there's a force working together trying to be in the same, one place to get around that corner, which that angle, it's tight, it's 70 degrees. Oh, it is, it is uh, you are almost making a U-turn, yeah. uh, practically speaking. Then you only have, as, as the, the short line, the shortest line measurement is 177 meters. So you, we predict there will be anywhere from five to 10 men after 9.8 k yeah. sprinting the last 177 meters into a small funnel that you see behind it's five you. meters wide and that is where there's going to be yellow cards there like yesterday there may be red cards thanks thanks uh thanks steven you've just reminded me i'm referring today now i'm getting nervous <laughs> But um, finally, um, just finishing up, you can see over here in this blue tent, these are our magnificent men from the company website. Powerhouse Timing. So you can follow the race live through Powerhouse Timing, putting through the splits. Now, Absolutely. let's just finish up, just say that website again. It's powerhousetiming.com and go under the swimming section. Yep, good, thanks for that tip. Now, they've, they brought up an interesting thing yesterday. They recently were at the US Senate swimming trials where Canada was also having their selection and they said that, you know, the difference between the men's splits and the women's splits was only 30 seconds and they actually called you and said, is this correct, you know, has something happened? The split yesterday, that was fast. That was absolutely fast. The women essentially negative split, uh, essentially even split at every single lap. They essentially went 31 minutes plus on every single lap. Um, and that was actually a little bit surprising. We had expected the women to pick up the pace slightly on the last loop. Uh, and it just tells us that those women, they hit the water and they went 10,000 meters hard. Well, thanks, um, Stephen, um, and for everybody watching this, as I said, Stephen is the chief editor of DailyNewsOpenWaterSwimming.com. All one word, DailyNewsOpenWaterSwimming.com. Thanks, Stephen. Have a great day, Clark, of course. Yeah. Get them in order, get them in line. We'll have a great start and great competition, and we'll hear from you soon. Thank you. Bye.